Hello dear friends, welcome to Shiksha Mantra. Today we have a discussion on English grammar and I can assure you that this particular discussion is going to be very very essential and important for your learning of English language and also at the same time it's going to help you in your classes it doesn't matter whether you belong to lower classes or upper classes, high schools or even if you are a student of competitive exam, you have to face this question very frequently. So actually, we are talking about changing voice. Yes, dear friends, if you learn these very simple steps, and you apply them when you are going to change the voice of some given sentences, I can assure you, you'd find it very effective and very easy. Normally, what we do, we normally learn some rules regarding the change of voice, some uh, rules for changing the tense, etc., etc., and we try to apply them. But as a teacher, I'll tell you one thing and remember it even for your future life and for all the other chapters of English grammar as well as the other subjects that you learn in your academics. Normally, rules are something that you have to decide because First, you have to make an analysis of whatever question you have been given. So, analysis is the first. Most of the times, I find my students making mistake in this position. So, you may ask me, so why you are uh, talking so much about things without telling us about those uh, steps of voice change? I am coming to that point. But before you learn those steps, it's essential for you to learn why you have to take those steps. Otherwise, whatever I'm telling here won't be of any use. So first learn why these steps are essential and what I'm telling you about the steps. What are the steps actually? These steps are nothing but the analysis of the sentence or the analysis of the question. As we are in English grammar, so yet the question that we face would get related to English grammar. So first, we'd grammatically analyze the sentence then we we'll decide which sets of rules that we have learned in our English grammar book would get applicable here. Yes, dear friends, first you have to decide which sets of rules you are going to use. But before you take that decision, you have to make an analysis of the questions. So, our approach for solving the voice change or grammatical problems is first would analyze so there would be two steps that would follow first analysis and then rules application so would apply the rules but before applying the rules would analyze the sentence so that we may understand what is the act actual rules to be applied here now you'd ask me sir why are you ask, uh, uh, telling us so many things regarding analysis etc etc so i'm coming to that point but one thing that you must remember voice change requires some grammatical aspects of the given sentence to consider Without considering those grammatical aspects, you cannot decide which rule to apply. For an example, I may tell you, suppose uh, you have been given an interrogative sentence and you have been asked to transform it into the next voice, change the voice. 
So interrogative. And then you have been given another sentence that is imperative sentence. Now you have to take the decision. You can't use the same sets of rules for imperative as well as interrogative. Rather, there you have to use different sets of rules. So first you have to understand na, which types of sentence is this. Whether this is an interrogative sentence or imperative sentence, if it's an interrogative sentence, which type of interrogative is this? Whether this is WH questions or yes no questions, if you get an assertive sentence, you would follow the different rules. If it's negative, you would follow another set of rules. So each and every type of sentence would actually attract different sets of rules that's why analysis is so very important and that's not for voice change only but for any other grammatical problems that you have been given so here we are going to show you how to make that analysis okay so with some practical examples would show you that analysis but before that what are the things that we'd consider here? So the first that we'd consider is verb. First, you have to find out the verb. Next, you have to consider the structure of the verb. Next, you have to decide the tense of the verb. Next, you have to find the voice of the given sentence. Then you have to find the subject. And obviously, then you have to find the object. And at last, you have to decide the sentence type. That means which types of sentence this particular sentence or the given sentence belong to. So just uh, remember these five steps. These are essential. Without considering these five, these seven steps, you cannot do anything. You can't use the rules properly these are just the basics of voice change so let me repeat them once again number one find the verb number two consider the structure of the verb number three decide the tense of the verb and here if you consider you would get that the number four find the voice all these are pretty related to one thing that is the verb. So here, when you consider these first four rules, these are pretty related to the verb. Only by considering the verb, you could have all these four steps. And after considering the verb, you'd find out the subject. It's very easy. You'd ask the verb with what or who. You'd get the answer. That's the subject. Then you'd ask the verb with whom or what and the answer you'd get would be the object. And there you may ask me, sir, why finding out the subject and the object is so very essential? My answer would be very, very simple. Yes, dear friends, there you'd get some sentences where you won't get a subject. And obviously, you'd also get some sentences where you won't get an object. Or some elusive object sometimes the verb and the object will remain the same so there's so very different kinds of rules you know you have already learned them and if you want learn them in detail just tell me in the comment section ask what particular thing you want to learn regarding voice change and obviously i'm going to have a class for that particular topic so we have found out the verb, the structure, the tense, the voice, the subject and the object. And the last but not the least is to decide. Yes, dear friends, you have to decide the type of the sentence that is the that is which type of the sentence the given sentence is because which rules you are going to use is totally dependable to what types of sentence you have been given. So let's check it. How we follow these steps. 
with our conventional method of voice change. Why I'm telling about this conventional method? Because you have learned it in your book. You have learned four steps, somewhere five steps, whatever it may be. And we always follow these steps as the rules for changing the voice. So first, we have been asked to change the position of the subject. That means the object would be transformed into the subject. Then change the verb into passive form or if the given sentence is in passive you would change the verb into active form then you add by or with for or transforming active into passive and then you change the subject into the object so these are the four different rules that we use for changing voice and this is the conventional rules we are talking of but if you consider very minutely, you'd find out that it's not possible for you to use these rules, these four con uh, conventional rules without analyzing the sentence. That means without following those seven steps we have decided in the previous slide. That's why I'm telling you it's so, so very important to considering those steps. Without considering, without analyzing the sentence, it's not possible for you to apply these conventional methods. Yes, dear friends, that's it. Do you want me to show you an example or uh, rather I would say a live example? How it works, how that seven steps works while you transform a sentence, transform the voice of a sentence? Obviously, I know your answer would be yes, because uh, a live example demands here for our proper understanding. So let's find out how they work. They means those seven steps. Before we understand how they work, we would take all those seven steps that uh, we have discussed at the very beginning. And here we'd have a sentence. An example with which would consider how it actually works. So here we have a sentence Rocky writes a letter. Step by step would consider the sentence and analyze it with these with these uh, seven steps. So first is find the verb. Rocky writes a letter. Now if I ask you which one is the verb? You'd very easily pause the discussion and would write in the comment, Sir, right is the verb. Right is the verb. So, this is the first point that we have completed. The first step find the verb. The next step says consider the structure of the verb so you have said sir right is the verb but here it's written as rights yes dear friends this is the structure we are telling of here you may get confused to some uh, extent what that structure we are talking of we are talking of this structure, rights. It could have been written as has written or is writing or uh, have been writing or uh, was writing, had written, will be writing, will have written. So many different structures could be here. So you have to consider what's the structure so we have found out the structure here it is written rights so these steps should be followed one after another because without completing this step you can't shift to the second one without considering the second step you can't shift to the third one 
So when we have completed the second step, that means we have already considered the structure of the verb, we have found out what tense the verb is in. Yes, dear friends, this is why analysis is such, such a great thing to do in English grammar. So you have considered the structure of the verb and you have revealed the tense of the sentence. So its verb have been found out. Now it's time for the tense and you know which tense is this. Here S is added after the main verb. That's why it's in simple present tense. Yes, dear friends. So, we have found out the tense of the sentence. Why? Because in the second rules, uh, yeah, in the second rules of the conventional English grammar, you have learned that you have to transform the verb into its uh, demanding form whether in passive or in active, whatever it may be, according to the tense. So that's why we have to find out the verb, then the structure and from structure the tense. But when you have decided the tense of the verb, next thing that's in demand that is find the voice. You have been given this sentence. Now, you don't know whether this sentence is uh, in active voice or in passive voice. How could you understand? Is it possible for you to understand whether you are going to do it in active to passive style or passive to active style? What would be your sets of rules? So, Knowing the type of voice of the given sentence is also very essential. Without considering this, you can't do this. And here, I'd like to tell you another fact. It's a fact. Most of the times, I have found the students, they decide the voice of the sentence by finding out by. They actually search for this word by. If there's by, it is passive. If there's no by, it's active. That's how I have found students consider whether the given sentence is active or passive. But you know, it's a CEO mistake. You mustn't do this. Why should you do things like this? Why should you consider this as active or passive by considering by? When you have learned the change of the structure for verbs, you know when we use B plus verb in past participle style in verb, it's in passive voice. So, from the structure of the verb, you have to learn the voice of this sentence. And from the structure, we have found out that it's verb plus S, verb in present form plus S. That means it's in active mode. So, it is active. Now, it's clear for us that we have to transform it into passive now you know which rules you are going to use for transforming this sentence so after considering this you have to shift to the fifth step find the subject why because we have understood probably you have understood it why you have to find the subject because you have to transform the subject as the object or transform the object as the subject. So finding out the subject is essential, but it is also related to this step. From the verb, you have 
to find out the subject because you have to ask the verb with who or what writes what writes no answer who writes now you have an answer and the answer is rakhi so rakhi is the subject of your sentence now you ask the verb with what rakhi writes what rakhi writes what the answer is a letter So, you have found out the object of the sentence and here again, I would ask you to consider the structure of the subject and the object. Here I am showing an example, very very simple example with a very simple sentence, but a subject or an object can be a noun or a noun phrase or a noun clause an entire sentence or a group of words in the form of a noun phrase so whenever you are considering the subject and the object of the given sentence it would be better for you to consider it as a pack because here letter is not the object but a letter this is the object be particular perfection as a student you need be perfectionist without being a mr perfection you can't do better in your academics here only mr perfections can perform so performance and perfection are very closely associated remember this First, you have to be a perfectionist, then you produce some extraordinary performance. So, Mr. Perfectionist, all my Mr. Perfectionist, you have found out the subject, the object and also their characteristics. Now, it's time for you to decide the type of the given sentence. Why? Because the verb has answered you the subject and the object. Now the construction SVO will tell you that this entire sentence is an assertive sentence. That's it. It's an assertive sentence and at the same time it would tell you that this is an affirmative sentence this is not negative so we have found out all the aspects of this given sentence its verb its subject its object its tense its structure its voice its types of the sentences now would apply the rules over this sentence which rules that conventional grammatical rules that you have learned in your books and would find how it works so when we are going to apply it conventional grammatical rules the first thing that would remember that would have to use the rules for assertive sentences you know it because you have already analyzed the sentence. So you know you are going to use assertive sentence in affirmative format. Assertive, affirmative. You know this is the subject, this is the verb, this is the object. You know it's in simple present tense. You know the entire sentence is in active voice. So you have to transform it into passive mode. Now you would use the object as the subject or later now you would transform the verb simple present form so it demands am is or are as you know but uh, here actually uh, we aren't going to use that uh, format i'm not telling you the format rather i'll tell you what would be your answer 
why the type of subject is essential actually that's uh, what i'm going to tell you it's very essential because there another factor works that is the number and the person though it's a noun here that's why person uh, doesn't matter much but if it is a pronoun their person would be a very important factor and it's a its number whether it's singular or plural here a letter this is singular that's where why we'd use is a letter is now the verb in past participle form that is a letter is written would use by then rocky that means the subject is transformed into object so we have successfully completed our transformation of sentence and finally we have get the passive sentence for this given active sentence rocky writes a letter that's it no it's not that's it i have some other points to share with you as well just remember these things these are going to be much helpful for your learning and your performance. When you are using by, you have to consider this object. Sometimes you have to use with as well, though not in this case, but sometimes you have to use with. So that consideration is essential. Don't think whenever there is passive, you have to use by before object. So, it would be better for us to uh, think of how many chapters got included into this single chapter. We have included so many chapters here. First, which chapter? First, we have used here parts of speech, noun, verb, etc. We have uh, found them out. So, first, we have used the chapter parts of speech from our English grammar here. Second, we have used tense. Third, we have used types of sentences. And here also we have used singular plural that is number. Here we have used noun and pronoun. Here we have used case. Here we have used gender. So, so many different chapters have been used here. And you must have a detailed knowledge of all these chapters. That's why I always tell you analyze the given sentence first take whatever exposure you need to get from the other chapters of english grammar and then dive into the question and answer you are going to flourish in your learning of english grammar and shiksha mantra is a platform for you to flourish and to excel so stay tuned with us. We always uh, come here in Shiksha Mantra on YouTube with such informational videos and classes. We are returning very soon. Till then, bye-bye. Happy learning.